So you're ready to get started in private practice, but how do you get clients to find you? In this video, I offer my top tips for marketing when you're first starting out in private practice. Welcome to Private Practice Skills. I'm Dr. Marie Fang, psychologist in private practice. I post videos offering tools I learned the hard way about starting and growing private practice so that you don't have to. When I first started out in private practice, I got all kinds of advice from well-meaning therapists about how to get more clients. I was running around like a chicken with its head cut off, trying to keep up with all of these tasks they'd advise me to do. Let me help you out real quick. Don't do that. There's all kinds of advice out there these days about how to grow your practice, but much of it takes a one-size-fits-all kind of approach. This can leave people feeling deflated when utilizing those approaches don't work for them, and it can also miss the opportunity to leverage our individual strengths to grow our practice our own way. Now with that said, you absolutely do need a marketing strategy in order to grow your private practice. Here are a few of my top tips to help you get started with your marketing. The main key here is to target your marketing efforts in the right direction rather than casting a wide net. Number one, narrow your niche. In order to target your marketing approach, you need to know your niche. The idea is that you're gonna have more success casting a smaller net, but catching the people who want to see you and only you. If you're not familiar with what your niche is yet, I have a video all about narrowing your niche, which I'll link to in the description box. Number two, identify where your target market hangs out. Now, I don't mean this in a creepy way at all, but for example, if let's say a colleague suggests that you run a Facebook campaign and your ideal client is older adults, well, we might imagine that older adults may not be hanging out on Facebook so much and so that may not be targeting your niche. So try to put yourself in your ideal client's shoes. Imagine where they might be spending their time, whether it's online or in person, where might you find them on the internet or face to face? Number three. Target your marketing. Rather than trying to take on every marketing strategy available under the sun, it's more helpful to focus your energies in those areas identified in step two. Now this might take some elbow grease, networking, and research, but it will pay off in the long run. For example, I market myself as an open and affirming therapist, working primarily with individuals who identify both as Christian and LGBT. So when I first opened my practice in San Jose, I went around and I looked for the local churches that were open and affirming. I contacted the leadership at those churches and started to network together with them. To be honest, out of all of the marketing strategies that I've used along the way, Way, this has by far been the most reliable, steady stream of clients that I've gotten through any marketing strategy. Furthermore, these clients that I get through this marketing strategy tend to stick around longer and refer more clients to see me because they are my target market. So as you can see, a targeted marketing approach geared towards your specific niche can go a really long way. Number four, solve a problem. Sometimes when we're marketing ourselves, it can feel like we're flailing our arms at the world going, hi, I'm here. Send me clients. Send me clients. And it can feel a bit sleazy. But instead, try to target your efforts towards solving a problem. For example, when I reached out to churches, I offered to teach free workshops in the areas that their congregants were needing some support with. This helped build trust and develop lasting relationships, even with those churches that I didn't end up leading a workshop for. Number five, utilize low hanging fruit. Whenever a therapist is starting out in private practice, I always suggest they start a free trial with whatever directories they can find a trial for. So Psychology Today, of course, is like the mothership and is the most popular, but there's an array of others available which you can find by just doing a Google search for find a therapist. See what you find, start the free trials, and see it as a type of market research to see which of these are helpful to you, getting you clients, and potentially worth paying for once your trial is up. Before you decide to drop one of these services, be sure to do the math. I can't tell you how many times I've heard therapists say that they're dropping psychology today because they only get one or two referrals a month from psychology today. One or two referrals. Let's have some fun with math. Psychology Today costs $29.95 a month, which amounts to about $360 per year. So if you're charging $150 per client session, you've already covered your annual cost for Psychology Today in just three sessions. 
And I still have clients who come to see me from years ago who were referred to through Psychology Today, even though I only get about one referral a month from Psychology Today. That's still amount to tens of thousands of dollars of revenue over the last six years that I've been listed on Psychology Today. When you create your listing, just be sure to target your profile. If you search my zip code on Psychology Today, I don't even show up on the first page. But if you select for my specialties of gay and Christian, there I am right at the top of the first page. Of course, there's so much more to marketing than this, but hopefully these tips will help you get off the ground seeing clients without feeling totally overwhelmed. Until next time, from one therapist to another, I wish you well. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this one or watch another video over here. Thank you.